Well, 11 was an old steam bucket dredger. It was mined on 15th of February 1917 by a mine laid by the German U-boat, the UC-16. Uh, the wreck was buoyed in 1951 to mark its position, which was then removed in 1954. Uh, sometime after 1940, the Ocean Sunlight, which is another wreck which lies really close by, was uh, blown up using old depth charges, which also demolished the remains of the leaven. It's probably been salvaged as well, so there's very little of it, little of it left. We dropped Jamie in on the marks that we had for the leaven. Um, when he dropped down, all we found was that uh, mooring. Um, we sort of believed that is the, the, the boy that actually marked the spot of the leaven, so we knew it wasn't very far away. You can see there those, uh, those metal bars is what you tie onto to secure the mooring boys too. There's a couple of little bits of pottery down here, raw Dalton pottery, which is a bit random. But uh, other than that, there's nothing else around the area. And uh, then once he came up, we went and had a look for this other mark and then I dropped in and found the remains of the leaven. It's a horrible, silty wreck covered in monofilament net, fishing line, old bits of trawl. It's not very nice at all. In the House of Commons, a Mr McNamara informed of Mr Billing that the leaven a dredger left port on February 15th to pick up an anchor lost by a vessel which had been torpedoed and subsequently salved. The crew had got hold of the chain of the anchor when an explosion occurred on the starboard side forward and the dredger sank. It was presumed that the vessel was sunk by a mine. Mr Billing asked whether it was not the fact that a dredger worth about £120,000 was sent into a known danger zone to salve an anchor worth about £50. Mr McNamara replied that he was perfectly sure it was not sent into a known danger zone. In amongst all this net you uh, do finally come across one of the buckets that the dredger would have used that would have gone down into the silt and, or mud or sand, whatever it was uh, picking up. That's one of them there. There's another more slightly crumpled bucket just coming into view. I haven't got any pictures of the leaven, but uh, when I was out and about or up in Gloucester, I did come across this old steam dredger. And you can see the buckets that are going down here into the water. And it's got that large wheel at the top. I'm wondering what you'll see next on the video is perhaps it's something to do with that. Which is this part here. And after this we'll go on, and it gets even better, we go on to the uh, wreck that sits next to what isn't the Clodmore. Well this is a mark next to not the Clodmore. I dived this years ago, uh, and if it's the same piece there was a, a small propeller sticking up out of the sand, but it's either there's either another piece of wreckage down here somewhere with a bit of propeller on it or it's uh, or it's disappeared under the sand. But if this is what they claim to be the Clam McMillan next to not the Clodmore, then I don't know what they've been drinking. It just looks like the remains. It's either the remains of a small trawler or something. It's just some ribs sticking up. There's a little bit of hole plating. It's riveted. Or perhaps it's something that's been blown off of the wreck of not the Clodmore. It does look like the uh, 
like the remains of part of a ship, like a hull. You can see some rivets on there there. See the rivets there a little bit better. On the other side, it uh, stands up a little bit more out of the sand. But that's about as good as it gets. It's probably better than the Levin, but not very much better. We're going to have a look at what Jamie's got in his boxes. It's far more interesting. partly off. Don't ask me where it came from. Have we got time for another box? Well I have but your dinner's ready. <clears throat> what does that mean? It means you'll be in trouble. Go on and get another one out then. Get another box. <laughs> Let's live dangerously. Nice bottle, I believe that's off to Harold. Came the tops missing. And as always, no, as always, generally speaking, there's a porthole in most boxes. Uh, uh, not sure where that came from, but that nice glass jar with some marmalade jar or something. Any markings on it? Oh, that's sort of KB LDT 9X or X6, X6 I think. with some starboard lantern glass in it. <coughs> so they're, they're quite nice. So the top worked and then they, uh, I think I've got some tops for them. That's mm -hmm. off the Oceana as well. Schweppes. So Schweppes, yeah, that must be Oceana, isn't it? Was that later? Schweppes with a CH. Yeah. I don't know, it's probably one of those things it's probably been going years, isn't it? Still yeah. going. What else have we got in here? Oh, oh that's Oceana. Right, we're getting a bit boring in here. I bet that's all say. Oceana in here, isn't it? Oh, mainly, mainly. That's not that. Oh, that's nylon, isn't it? Yeah. That's trays. And the nylon was what? A oh, Swiss that's, motor vessel. Yeah, that's quite a late one, isn't it? The nylon. It is. Uh, sunk in 1962. Diesel engines. Yeah, and they, uh, if you're lucky, you can um, see the charging cylinders. Yeah, you pointed them out to me before, actually, all sort of laying in a line there. Yeah, and they start, they start the engine with compressed air. Yeah. Sort of vinyl LPs there as well. Don't ask me what's on them. But <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Oh, it's all the old uh, windscreens as well, isn't there? Off of Volkswagens Volkswagen, or something? Yeah, windscreens. Yeah, all and lined up, aren't they? Um, and you have to hold it so big. It's a bit that you don't actually realise you've seen it, but it's a very, very large propeller okay. in one of the holds. Um, it's not like if once the visibility picks up, you can get far enough away from it. You can actually see what it is, but oh. obviously close up, it's quite. It's, it's really big. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's um, some coke. Everyone's had the coke bottles out of the machine out the back, aren't they? As well, yeah. Yeah, I've had a few coke bottles, some of the old style some of the, the cokes. Cabin at the back. Yeah. Um, and also, there's a, a church bell come out of there as well. Oh yeah. But um, that's another story. That's, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't say anything about church bell. Huh? Huh. Let's get back to the boxes. Oh, okay. right. Number three. Ah. Ah. Oh, that's the top of a 
Top of the limb, top of the limb isn't it? Yeah, so yeah. 52 metres off the deep wreck. Yeah, uncharted in two parts. Uh, broken just far forward of the wheelhouse. The gun is still on the bows. The gun is... The Austro-Hungarian, you said, wasn't it? Well, the shell cases, yeah, are for a Austro-Hungarian gun of eight-pounder armour-piercing type. Uh, the shell cases are in Studio One. <coughs> um, there was a telegraph found that had French and English commands on it and yeah, some pieces of crockery with what we believe to be well, I think it's World War One type right. on it. So it's, uh, yeah, there's not, it's, there's not a lot sticking up above the seabed, but um, it's a really interesting one. It's, to be honest, it's something that's really important that we really should name mm. because, uh, you know, there's some, our oh, lads have, yeah. gone missing on that so oh. it'd be really good to get a definitive yeah. name on that one well that's sort of that sort of depth we'll do it towards the end of the season if we get out there Quite a few, you see quite a few of those, don't you, with the old dolphins on them with yeah. the gimbal? Yeah. Oh, is, that the shift, is that the shifting lock? Yeah, French design of shifting bolt type. Oh, in, isn't it? Yeah. You'd have to make this mark up. 